Hey friends, so we are finally doing the cage clean video. I'm gonna be doing some full cleans. I'm gonna be doing some half cleans. I'm gonna be showing you how I clean some water bottles. Sort of just all things cleaning. I am gonna start with the top and work my way around and then hit the bottom cage. The supplies I use for cleaning really is just my cleaner, paper towels, a rag, my dustpan, boop, and oh, and my poo bucket. I like having a little poop bucket to dump in my big poop bucket. I do recommend that you have a cleaner that is safe for animals. So like no harsh chemicals, no bleach. Vinegar and water is honestly one of the best things you can use. There's also a lot of green products out there that you can use. This is one of those products. I like this brand called Attitude. Also, a lot of times when I run out of my refills for this, I just use vinegar and water. Some people also put Dawn dish soap along with their mixtures, but make sure it's just like no chemicals. You scared Johnny. You mean you scared Johnny? You made a loud noise. So if the weather permits, I usually like to open a window just because a lot of things are gonna be flying around. I'm gonna be picking up a lot of hay, a lot of their soiled mats that've got hay crumbs on it. So I just like to have fresh air in here. I usually would have my air purifier in here as well and turned on, but for sound, we can't do that because it kind of would like hum over everything. If you live in an area where like you can have the windows open or if it's the time of year where it's not too cold or too hot, it is nice to have like fresh air coming in as you're, you know, doing your cleans. But due to sound, my manager makes me have it closed when we film. All right, so this is Moira and Johnny's cage. I am gonna start out by taking out one of their water bottles that I have not cleaned. I have already cleaned this just because it would take forever if I just cleaned all of the water bottles on film. I like to start cleaning by like taking the hay that's already in their hay rack and sort of pulling it out just so that it's enticing to them. And so when I kind of scare them away from the area that I'm gonna start cleaning, they have like fresh hay to munch on and it's something sort of enjoyable as I'm, there you go. As I'm sort of forcing them out of their comfort spots. See, <laughs> it's like perfect. Now they get to like hide. All right, so this is one of the pig room bunk beds. This is the jumbo bunk bed, as you can see. Whenever you find a lot of doo-doos, that means it's a very popular spot. It means this area likes to be chilled in. So, this is my dump bucket. And then this is where I put dirty laundry. I do try to like unfold everything just so when it goes in the wash. And I just kind of break the whole thing down, take all the linens out, take the pee pad out. And then because Austin just sent me two new ones, I can just switch this out. But normally what I would do is take it apart and make sure all these legs come out. And then I go and soak it in hot water and soap. So I'll put this outside the room. But because I don't have to wait for it, I have a new one I can put in. <laughs> so I'm focusing on this part of their cage right now. As you can see, look at all these duties. For me, I'm not gonna rearrange the layout of their cage because all the poops being over here and what I have designated as their cuddle area has a lot of poop in it, which means they really like how it's set up over here. So I'm gonna leave it. I'm not gonna change anything, but I am just gonna dump all the poops out and give them all fresh linens. Listen to that sound. It's like, make it rain. This is the part of the cage where it becomes either a full clean or like what I call a partial clean. So I just took off what I call like the top layer, the comfy layer, the plush layer. And then this is my protective layer. I use dog pee pads. They actually have them aimed for guinea pigs too. Like if you were to look on Amazon, but it's just the washable pee pads. Now I had just put new ones in there for them. Actually, no. Nope, they got really comfortable in that spot. As soon as these feel any type of dampness at all, then I replace them because that's gross. And the whole point is to protect the coroplast 
and you just don't want to keep that soiled bedding as the bottom layer to put clean on stuff on top because that moisture is just going to go through to the you know the clean layer that you just put on so what you're saying is your half clean is about to be a full clean so where is this portion of the cage this would be considered what i'm doing right now a full clean where i take out my protective layer i take out everything and i'm down to the coroplast if i'm down to the coroplast that means i'm doing a full clean and the girls are just munching on the hay that i took out of their hay racks which is you know it gives me a peace of mind knowing that they have something to distract them because i'm doing things over here that are normally fairly stressful to a guinea pig mine aren't super skittish because we do this often but you know it's like something to make them happy while i'm disrupting their their area so this is where the supplies i showed you in the beginning of the video i mostly use my dust pan like this and the cleaner for full cleans I come down to the coroplast and I just kind of get up all the remnants of hay or hair, or poop, whatever might be down here. Again, this is why I love having these dump buckets because I can just put everything in them. Then I come in and I spray. I like to do the walls. The walls, you'd be surprised, they can get very dirty. So you don't want to forget about the side of the walls as much as you want to do the base. And then just come in and wipe it down. Oh, she's peeing so much right now. So these are the liners that I was saying they aimed towards guinea pigs. They have little guinea pigs on them. They are not as wide as my plaid ones because I think they're actually meant for two by four. So I do have to fold them under because they're just a little long, which is fine because in the corners here, is usually where they get soiled the most. So now I have sort of like a double layer. So I'm never really mad at that. And I even like sometimes how it comes up on the side because guinea pigs really do love to get pea crust like in these corners. So if I can kind of keep the pea out of these corners as best I can, it really helps when it comes to deep cleaning the coroplast. So now for my plush layer, this is where I try to figure out which way I wanna lay them. I think what I'm gonna do is a long ways this way. I'm gonna just fold her up for right now because this is still dirty. Oh, here comes someone. You're gonna come anyway, even though I'm not done. That's fine. I have the smaller version, which fits perfect in these little hay nooks. These are the Target ones. They're the same size as Austin's. All of mine from Austin right now are either being used or they're in the wash because they're the best ones. I use my Targets as my like backup. Austin's are usually like the ones I go to first to use. So once I've dressed their bed, if you will, and I have their protective layer down, I have their plush layer down, this is when I start putting back in their actual sleep items and tunnels and things. I will now bring my clean jumbo piggy bunk bed and I'll put it right back in the same spot that it was because they really do like the way this cage is laid out currently. So I'm not gonna change it for right now. We're just gonna put her right back. A trick I like to do to try to preserve this plush layer from getting soiled and poop and is I just take a, a cut fleece up and I'll just lay it like this. So that way when I come in to do a spot clean at night and this has a bunch of poop on it, I can just take this little strip of fleece out and dump the poops in here. And then if it's not super soiled, I can just use it again or just put a clean one in its place. And then that way these mats last a little bit longer and they stay clean and it's just easier for cleaning instead of me having to be like, oh, I need to take this mat out or oh, I need to take this out to get this mat out. It's what I find works for me. Everybody, obviously, depending on the way their cages are set up, is gonna have a flow that works best for them, but this is what works for me. It does create more laundry in the sense of these like small fleece pieces, but it's made it so that 
I didn't have to buy a lot of mats in order to make it so that I could have them fresh all the time. So I have about like, I don't even know, maybe eight of these houses. So whereas the one I just put in the dirty laundry, where is it? Is the same, this one's a brand new clean one with a clean piece of fleece in here. Again, I put fleece in the bottom of here. So when all their poops are in there, I can take this out, boom. And this stays less poo soiled. I know Moira would really love to come in here first and claim it. So let's get that ready for her. Last but not least, just put this little hand towel, anything just to give that extra little bunk. Even though this is here, Johnny really likes this whole thing covered. So then I just clip a pillowcase to it and just carry it across the tunnel. And then here you go. That was a full clean on one section of my cage. And as anyone here knows with piggies, like they cannot believe a fresh clean area. They lose their mind. They get so excited. They drag their little booty coochie all over it. Yeah, don't you Moira? He's so excited. Look at all those doo-doos. Now here's where I just do the rest of the cage. They'll stay in the freshly cleaned area and I will come tackle all these beautiful duties that they've left for me. As I go is how I determine if it's gonna be a full clean. Like I start feeling around and like this is bone dry cause I just put this down like a couple days ago. So even though I am wiping the side walls off, I mean like, see they're dirty. Whether that's just dust, it doesn't matter. It's dirty. Hey dust when I say dust. Back to what I was saying, even though I am wiping the side walls like this, this is still what I would consider not a full clean because I'm not taking out this bottom layer. This is more like a half clean. We still clean and even though it's a half clean, you know what I'm saying? Bada boom. What do we have? So I'm probably gonna need one two liners. Again, so these target mats are not wide enough to fit obviously this whole length. So I just have old fleece little liners. This was actually a ramp liner for one of my old cages when I had two level. This one fits perfect width wise. This is the same width as the pig room. And then here I have like a little gap missing. So what I'll do is I'll find another little pee pad that I have and I will fill in the blank space. All right. So I like to put them under the mats instead of having them over. So this is like a more gradual edge than if I was to have it like this. I just feel like this is easier on their little joints. It's my personal opinion. That is a clean cage, folks. Now we just gotta put it back together. All right, now I'm just gonna put fresh hay into their hay rack, which Moira is very excited about. She knows exactly what's happening. So this creates a lot of what I call and what is called like hay dust when you're shoving and moving around a lot of hay. So this is why I like having windows open, but I will hold the hay out before I put it in their cage and just kind of get the hay dust that's kind of moving around in the area. And then I also really like giving them hay piles right outside of their hay rack. Cause as you could see, they really like to burrow in it and hide. So same thing, I'll put it in. It'll kind of be dusty. Give me a second, babe. You know the drill. And hold on. And I kind of just wave around, kind of get it out. Spread it around the room. 
No, I just want to get it not so concentrated in the area where they're about to face plant because as soon as I do this, they face plant in it and I want it to be as dust free as possible before they go in there. All right, girlfriend, go ahead. Miss Impatient. Like I said, see, look, a straight head plant. Good girl. We are going to take a quick break from cleaning because we are happy to say that this week's video is sponsored by HelloFresh. The holidays are just around the corner and HelloFresh makes this busy time of year easier than ever with chef crafted recipes and pre-portioned ingredients delivered right to your door. So you can spend less time meal planning and prepping. Oh, okay, it shows you pictures. Oh, it like literally writes it out. I'm a very visual person, so this is nice. Save money on dinner and splurge on holiday shopping. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout. Ooh, I love lime rice. With over 35 weekly recipes, there's something to please everyone. You can also easily customize your recipes by swapping proteins or sides, upgrading to choice proteins, or even adding protein to a veggie meal. Oh my God, I wanna keep this. Look at this paper cooler. I clean houses for a living and care for 12 animals, so I never wanna put a lot of effort into what I eat. And because of that, I normally don't eat very healthy. But with HelloFresh, I can make myself something healthy without the mental stress. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code guineapigjungle60 for 60% off plus free shipping. And once again, that's HelloFresh.com. Use code guineapigjungle60 to receive 60% off and free shipping. Look at the little potato. She's also in a jumbo piggy bunk bed from the big room. Yes. You like it because you think there might be a pea flake on the end of that camera, and there just might be. You just never know. After I do full cleans, partial cleans, spot cleans, this is when I put their enrichment and toys back in. And I think this would be a really good time for them to try one of the pig room's new products, their Timothy straws, because my piggies have never had them before. So what's cool about these is if, <laughs> She knows there's something here. Is if you want them to last a little bit longer, you can snap them in half and give half. Would you like one, babe? Oh, you do. Oh, 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 she's. I love when they're so excited about something, they tilt it and hold it up. Is she in here? When you know they take it and run and disappear with it, that means it's a very valued treasure because they don't want anyone to find them and take it from them. So Johnny Moyer give the Timothy Straws an A plus right now. We've got two A plus. So Johnny and Moyer are done and now we make our way to Frenchie and Gigi. Hi girls. Hi girls. <laughs> Look at that face. Look at you. Oh, she said, starting to chatter at you. She said, get out of here, get out of here. So for Frenchie and Gigi, Gigi's like a pretty skittish pig. I like to just put all of their sort of belongings on one side. So when they get spooked to one side, they have some things to keep them busy. Gigi is currently in this sack. And I'm actually gonna start with their hay section first instead of last, like I did with Moira and Donnie. So because of the way their cage is laid out, their hay is in the middle of the cage. Here's their hay area with their plush mat and then their protective layer. Their protective layer I put down yesterday. So this is bone dry. So this will be a half clean. So I will just replace it with literally the exact same one, except this one's clean. I will immediately replace their hay. So because this was exactly the way the hay rack was when I took it out. This hay is all really fresh. So what I will do is take this hay out and use it as their burrowing hay. See how that's all dusty? So if it looks really dusty when I pull it out, I just pitch it and then give it a nice blow around. So that means this is gonna be the exact same. All the fine little pieces at the bottom get really dusty. So again, I know pitching hay for some folks seems crazy because hay, when you order it, 
from you know any kind of company, manufacturer company, it's gonna be expensive. I get my hay from a farm, so I only pay like $13 a bale. I will discard hay. I can be very wasteful with it. Whereas before I was not when I was spending like $50. These racks are from LA Guinea Pig Rescue. They're the best racks. I really feel, I've had just about every kind you could think of. I want to go grab, we gotta blow up this dust. And now I'll just start on one side. Oh, you're both over here. Sorry, Gigi, I really thought you were in the tunnel. <laughs> so I just cleaned their cage the other day, pretty much everything. So this is gonna be like a half clean spot clean. Go on, girl, you got it. I'm gonna take away your tunnel. And then you're gonna poop. Oh no, everyone can see you. So this is, <laughs> Like I was showing you in Moira and Johnny's cage, how I will put a fleece layer down. I'll just take it out. So I have hers tucked in the bed and right outside. And I'll take the whole thing and just shake it. Now this blanket was just put there yesterday and it's bone dry. I put it right back. Now you'll see that I have a pee pad under here because what Gigi likes to do, cause this is the bed she likes to sleep in. She doesn't like to pee or poop where she sleeps. So what she does is she comes out here because I have, again, this situated like this. She comes and this is her potty corner. <laughs> so she comes out of bed and she comes over to this corner and she soils it. So I have this extra um, pee pad that I actually got from Alyssa, from Alyssa and Pets. And I put it right here, it's nice and thick and it helps protect everything. So again, I'm not having to change this out so much. I'll just change these pee pads out and it just makes my laundry cycle so much easier. And Gigi is a little like cave kitty. So I do call her a kitty. She's kind of like a little kitty cat to me, like a non-social kitty cat. So I really give her the cave life of her dreams, just like so. So now while they're over on the new side, I will start on the old side. And this is like equivalent right now to spot cleaning. And now I'll replace it with the clean one. Spot clean half cleans are like so fast, so chill. Here's a little toy. I know if I put it somewhere close to a tunnel, Gigi can get to it. So I have a car washer right here, but I think because I haven't taken it off, it's been there since I put these together, I'm gonna take this off. Since I'm not changing their layout, cause they really like the layout the way that it is. Gigi likes to be able to have a way that she can get away from Frenchie. And again, I've explained in a previous video that I set their hay out from the wall because they like to come in behind and hide in these corners. Cause I usually have this pillowcase over. So, their setup doesn't change very much, but that's why I kind of want to just take one little thing off. I have two style of water bottles. I have ones like this that you fill from the top, and then I have like your classic water bottle. And I'm gonna show you how I clean each one. So I will take their water bottle out and clean it at the end of this video. But for now, we have to get them their sample. I'm so excited. What are you, Gigi? She's right there. She'll only take it if I set it down. French fries. <laughs> Her little cigar. <laughs> here then I don't want to bother him. Aww, Olive, he bothered you. Uh, I'm so sorry. So this is Olive and Figgy's cage. I'm actually going to switch around with their layout. I'm gonna put their hay back over here and then put their cuddle station back over here because the way I have it set up right now and you'll see when I take these off, they're really not into this tunnel sleep area. So I need to make two cuddle spots that they're super into again because they really do like to nest in their hay area. The way I have the hay set up on this side, it leaves more space for them both to cuddle in it than the way it is set up right now. So this might be, 
depending on how soiled this area, this half might be like a full clean down here. We about to find out, because there's a lot of poop. A guinea dad liner if you go in it's to the right any of the ones with the colorful pocket if you guys have guinea dad liners then you know how amazing they are and they fit my cage width perfectly these folks really do love the pocket sometimes i use the pocket and sometimes i don't like sometimes i'll just put a plush little Heidi right here or like the jumbo bunk bed on top and I don't let them have access to the pocket. And then sometimes I do, merely just to switch it up. So for today, I am going to give them access to the pocket. Again, I do my like fleece trick where I shove a little cutting of fleece inside the pocket. So when they soil it with a bunch of poops, I can just pull this out and dump it instead of having to try to, you know, mess with the liner itself and I can switch this out and therefore it helps keep the base of the liner from being soiled so fast because when I do let them have access to the pockets, they will stay in there and pee in those corners. I really love a double bridge system because if you see the single bridge, a lot of piggies will stand here and then they'll stand back here and then they pull this down. But if you do double bridge, double bridge, double tunnel, I call it double bridge, then they're less likely to go behind and they'll stay up. And then that way they each have a little area that they can lay. Go get your tunnel. You'd be so excited. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Olive. Watch this. Make way for the big girl. All right, so this was their little cuddle, cuddle corner, and we are now gonna be making it the hay corner. And away they go. So I'm gonna toss their enrichment down to the other end. Ta-da! And now we'll shake off these mats. Now these mats are really dry, so because they're really dry, the base, hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and switch out this. So I am gonna do a full clean on this side, I think. Even though it's not super soiled, the mats were a little, you know, had a bunch of crumbs on them. This little corner is moist. And just the size of my liner, since this one's so dry, let's see, what liners do I have available? So right now I only have one of these left. So I'll just keep it folded in half like that and shove it in this corner. Since this is the hay area where they really do like to soil a lot, doubling it up works great for me. I personally do not like to have car washers where hay is because it kind of just gets all stuck to each other. So because I'm putting their hay over in this corner, I'm gonna take down this car washer. I might use it in another corner. Repeat the same method, protective layer, plush layer. If they overlap, it is no big deal. There we go. And now, oh, look at the birdie. You're so cute. Oh, you're both so cute. Hi, you must have heard me say that you were cute. Before I get the hay going, let's give them their little treat. You want to hand it to them? And move away. Mm -hmm. 
So same as I did with Brinchies, I'm gonna take the hay that's in their rack and I'm just gonna spread it around. Now I say this with like every cage. I set up according to how I know that they like to do things and they really like to nestle in their hay space. So I will be setting it, this up according to how I know they have a preference. Be patient, my sister. You did? Yeah. This boy loves his hay. Olive's most favorite things are these baskets. So I always have them on hand. She destroys them pretty fast, but she really likes these. So I kind of I put these in the corner. I let her fully destroy one before I give her a new one because it's just like a dog or a kid. If you like start replenishing them before they're actually done with, they'll start to be like, I want a new one now and I don't like this one. So once she's fully done with one hay hut, then I give her another one. And then I'll set a tunnel up right here because Figgy really likes having a tunnel there. This part isn't ideal for filming, but I will do this. Olive really likes seeing fully covered. Figgy wouldn't care, but she really does prefer it. So we give the lady what she wants. We done with this one. I'm gonna do the water bottles now. Like I mentioned earlier, I have two different kinds of water bottles. So I will show you how I do each water bottle. So here's what the mouthpiece looks like. So for the mouthpiece, I really do like to have the water running just about as hot as it can go. These are the brushes that I have. For the mouthpiece, I typically use these two brushes and I'll just take a little bit of Dawn, put a little bit of water on there and I see this area and I'll just scrub. And I'll scrub in here and around the metal, along the mouthpiece, because this is where they put their mouth. Then I take the straw brush and I go into the mouthpiece to get all the gunk that can get trapped in there. And I'll go in both sides just in case. And then I'll take this one and I'll just run it through the inside one more time. And then I get the water nice and hot. You just wanna make sure you're getting all the soap out. I've heard Autumn say she likes to actually take the water piece and hit the ball like this when she's running the water through just for good measure. Now for the bottle, I take all the water, existing water, and I just dump it out. Now this water bottle I had actually cleaned rather recently, so I'm not gonna fill it up with soap. Sometimes I'll just drop soap down in the bottle and let it fill up with water. But I actually am gonna just do the soap on the toothbrush like I showed you earlier. And I like to get this rim right here. And then, I fill it up a little bit with hot water and then I take the large bottle brush and I shove that in because this really gets this bottom edge down here in these corners and it will also hit this top rim. So I'm focusing on the bottom of the water bottle right now and really trying to get these bristles in these corners. Then I'll pull the brush up so that they're now pressing up against the top rim here and then you can go back down and focus on the bottom. Now my trick for getting suds out is I let the water run and then I just let all the suds, if you see, keep letting the water hit inside the bottle, the suds will just keep rising out and it sort of clears out the bubbles. And then I dump and then I'll do that method one more time. And then I shake aggressively on the second one and then one more. And I don't fill the third one up all the way. I just do a little bit, shake and then let it run out. Ta-da! Clean water bottle. And you wanna make sure you have no little bubbles. If you see any kind of little sud bubbles, you wanna go ahead and rinse it again because then that means there's still soap inside. So now for my top loading water bottles. If you can, I just pull the bottom out. I like to use the toothbrush and I take it and I run it along the bottom. And I really just work the corners. And that's really all I focus on for these. Just really get all the area where their mouth goes. Hot water, let it run through, and then rinse out your container. These are a lot easier to clean than your standard water bottle. I really do prefer this type. And my pigs seem to as well. And we do filtered water. So because they are fresh, I go ahead and I fill them up while I'm out here. So it is said that it is good not to feed your piggies cold water. So if I fill it up directly from the fridge, they also have a water bottle already in their cage. I only take out one water bottle per cage at a time when I'm cleaning. And I'll let these sit 
just like in the room at room temperature for like 20, 30 minutes, and then I'll put them in the cage just so they're not too cold. We have finally made our way to the bottom cage, which I know is the part of this whole cage build that everyone's been so curious about when it comes to cleaning. So as far as like the difficulty of cleaning this cage, I don't find it very difficult. I am five feet tall, so getting into like smaller spaces and being like low on the ground is not an issue for me. I do have a bad back, but again, I don't find it difficult. Now, if you were to be super tall, this might be very difficult for you, but Austin is significantly taller than me and he doesn't have a difficult time. So my point is, I don't find it difficult to clean the bottom level. I know that was like a big concern, like everyone's question, like how how hard is it to clean that? How hard is it to clean the bottom level? Like what's, what about the light situation in there? And to answer that question, Josh has put these LED strip lights in here that are dimmable, so, I told someone in the comments who was curious about it, I sort of just like mimic the, the sun. So when it's the morning and it's bright and it's during the day, I keep the lights up pretty bright. And then as the sun goes down, I, you know, I dim the lights and then I turn them completely off at night because we do have the same strip of lights running along the backside of the cage. And that's what I use as the night light. So it's not directly in anyone's cage. It's just light reflecting off of the wall for them. So let's get started. Hi, Bebe. She's so sweet. She's so sweet. She likes me. Beep, beep, beep. Okay. And I will start with their hay area just because it is right here. This is where Josh has everything set up to film me. I will say filming cleaning this area is not ideal, but as far as actually just cleaning it, it's not that hard. Right, girlfriend? And we do the same, same system. Now, I will be doing a full clean on these. Among the herd, the herd really are super big into the bunk beds. So we have to make sure we have at least two in their cage at all times because they will kind of like argue over who gets it. Now here's my base layer. So what I'm gonna do for them is I'm gonna sort of do like how I told you I do for Johnny and them. I literally, I know I complain about this all the time when it comes to filming cage cleans. It's like so not ideal because everything is in my way. <laughs> Including Josh. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take the entire hay rack that's over here since I'm gonna be full clean everything for them. I'm just literally shoving all of the hay out, making just one big, huge hay mess over here. And then that way, once I start tearing up over on this side of the cage, they'll just naturally all migrate this way and they'll notice that the hay is sort of spread around and there's no hay rack and they'll get super into it and then sort of not be as bothered by me. However, Bebe loves to know what I'm doing. Right, Bebe? All right, the Bebe. I will say a tip for those who have to clean bottom cages and your back is sore, and I fall victim to this, I like have to constantly tell myself this when I'm doing this, is really just like engage your abs. Really squeeze your core and just the more you engage your core, the less strain you're putting on your back. And I like literally just say it over and over in my head so that I'll do it. Otherwise, I'll relax my muscles in my abdomen and then my back starts to ache. You better not be filming me bent over like this. So for the sake of just making it easy <laughs> for filming, I rinse these off in the sink with hot soapy water and then I'll just literally towel them off, just wipe them off so that I can 
put them right back in the cage. I do like to switch what's on the top and what's on the bottom. So just to preserve the product, I, I do rotate. So, Austin just surprised me with this liner that is literally made specifically for this length of cage. And I threw this in the wash immediately after opening it because I want to set it up so bad. And I want to share it with you because I have never had like a cohesive patterned cage before. And this is going to be my first time. Josh, grab it. Make yourself useful. Look at that. Don't go over there yet, you little stinker. You keep your little hiney over there. On the phone, he told me that he made this specifically for this little nook area. Look at that. Look at that. I'm like, that's so professional. All right, I'm gonna put a pig mat actually over the liner just so that I can take it this out and shake the hay off because this is a hay area. So this is like a lot of the stuff that I just got in that surprise package from Austin. This is that big liner that fits the whole length of one of the cages and his other liner down here for my little pop-out stations. This is one of his pig mats. These are the really plush ones. These are the ones that I really, really love. Again, another one of his jumbo piggy bunk beds. That's one of the brand new colors. It looks so good with that fleece liner. Look at that. It's just great. And then of course, his signature design, his plush tunnel with his logo on it. I am so excited that I have one of these because this is the cutest thing ever. I just love that he did this. I love that he put his pigs on it. I just love how personal it is. It is so freaking cool. Look how good it looks over here now. Did you get what it looked like before? Like it looks just so much cleaner and more cohesive and it's bright and it's cheerful and it doesn't look chaotic. Oh, I love how well it flows. It's so nice. I wish I could sew. Austin, you must have so much fun doing this, like for your own pigs. Oh my gosh. Next side. coming for you. Look at her.
So this is one of the new piggy mats that Austin just gave me. And I'm going to put it inside the pocket, like so. Because these ones are just so plush and soft. And then that way, when they poop and pee in here, I can just pull out the mat, shake it off just like I would a fleece blanket. I am gonna do another double tunnel system. David. All right, I'm gonna use one of Austin's plush tunnels from last year that he gave me. It's spooky themed, so it's perfect because it's holidays. If you see how I like pile it up so it's like floating like this, it's so that they can like reach up and grab it and pull it down. Cause I noticed like they really like get up and pull hay down. And then that way it's less hay getting soiled and it's more dry hay for them to eat. And they can just burrow underneath of it. Now it's finally, <laughs> it's finally you guys' turn for your pig room straws. Here, here. Oh, I just handed you one. Dab -dab. that thing with my hand. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. I love you and I'll see you next time. Ow! <laughs> my hand.